favorite restaurant muchachos but one day a year the good lord calls upon me and I undergo a transformation about myself, grew up near the Bronx in a little municipality known as Cutthroat Springs, kind of place where you gotta wrestle a dog to get your mail, kind of place where my high school principal was an ex-pimp, his name was Principal Sugar Doo Doo, kids didn't mess with him, and his hat was bigger than the pumps, hey, quiet down Lord, only telling the truth, but enough about me, buddy. My name is Bonnie Lass, everybody. Hi, nice to meet you all. I used to be a hooligan back in the days, back in my Catholic school growing 
world days, but it won't be all. But since then I've seen the error of my ways and I'm on the right path. Uh, I still get freaky every once in a while, but it's, within, it's well within the rules of the Catholic Church. My husband and I are working on shibari with Celtic knots right now. It takes forever, but damn, the artistry is good. All right, and introducing each of themselves is our lovely contestants. We have seven beautiful Irish contestants here all today in our Irish Catholic game show. All right, contestants, please tell us what your name is, a little bit about yourself, and why you want to be on this show. Well, my name is Patio Furniture. I'm a carpenter. I make, I make things with my hands just like Jesus. I come from a long lineage of carpenters, you know, all the way back to my great, 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 great granddad, which was Jesus himself, which means that I'm a 1,000th black. I tell ya, that's right. And that means Mary Magdalene was my great, 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 grandma. Mary Magdalene, tell me that's not an Irish name. You know what it really was? It was Mary MacDonald. But those damn revisionist racist English bastards wrote us right out of the fucking good book, I tell ya. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to set the record straight for Ireland. Yeah. All right. And speech. Uh, so my name is Pete Pablo. St. Pete Pablo. Uh, I got on this show just because, uh, well, I am Irish through Hispanic roots and stuff like that. So uh, you can call me a leprechaun. And uh, I, I just want to take a cruise down the plaza, you know, and find my, my Chicano, other Lepicano, and uh, yeah, take a cruise down the plaza sometime and keep it easy, you know? That's it. Alright, he's the spiders. Hello, I'm Doyle O'Doyle, your friendly neighborhood bartender, who dispenses excellent advice, the results may vary. I, uh, <laughs> Good advice, you know, advice like a hangover is just God's way of letting you know he are his chosen people, which is how the Irish know they're chosen, as well as the English and the Scottish and the French and the Italians and the Russians and the Slavs and all the Germans, basically everyone but the Mormons. Anyway, I'm just here to dispense some good advice. The results may vary. I'm Snake O'Daniels, amateur in every martial arts. I've traveled, <laughs> I've traveled the entire world and taken every free class I can come around. And now for my next challenge, Irish Catholicism. Check, Tom Brady, and uh, Ben Affleck, the real down devil. Thank you so much. I'm Sally O'Reilly. I'm an Irish mom, and I don't like my kids at all. Uh, I, that's why I'm here tonight. I just need some time away from my terrible children. So thank you so much. All right. Give it up for your candidates here, everybody. You all discussed both me and the Lord. It's time to do your work, big guy. All right, all right, all right. So how this works is an interactive audience game show. So we're going to go for a couple rounds. We're going to ask these contestants some questions. In between rounds, we're going to have you, the audience, have your say. You're going to vote off a couple of contestants until we get to the one last winner. So please pay attention for who you like and who you don't like. All right. Also, after this game show, we're going to have some stand-up comedy. So stick around for stand-up comedy afterwards. You're going to see these same contestants in stand-up comedy. All right, we're going to get to the first round. As every good Catholic knows, uh, Bible verses are very important. Sword drills, anybody? Sword drills, are you ready on that? All right, so I'm going to give each contestant, myself and Father Delicious, we're going to give you half of a Bible verse, a very well-known Bible verse, the good canon, and you are going to tell us the other half of it. Are you ready? All right. In the beginning, God 
created the heavens and... In the beginning, God created the heavens and Guinness. And then he stopped because everything was perfect. <laughs> I can do all things through... Some Daytona 16-inch spoke rims, eh? <laughs> Get a bumping on the lowrider, I said. I think that, that, might be the, that might be the newer version. <laughs> all right. On the seventh day, God... Well, on the seventh day, God poured himself a drink, and he looked at his creation, and he said, maybe I should have another couple of drinks. And so he did. And then he went and changed everything, and that's how we got the world we live in now. Let he who is without sin... Sin as much as they please, because life without sinning is born. I don't think that's quite it. All right, here's your verse. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will blank. And I will make sure that you love me. Thank you. All right. For you. And the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and the donkey said, <laughs> uh, Let there be light? <laughs> I don't think God gave the donkey that quote. All right, one more. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, and... Uh, I'll tell you who's not confident, my oldest son, Joshua. He's an asshole. All right, shout out to Joshua. Moving on. Oh, this is a very well-known verse. This is my table verse. My, uh, my grandmother embroidered this on my pillow. He went up from there to Bethel, and while he was going up on the way, some small boys came out of the city and jeered at him, saying, Go up, you bald head, go up, you bald head. And he turned around, and when he saw them, he blanked. And when he saw them, he smote them little bastards, and told them how to fucking fight their way back home. Fucking, it's the way it ought to be. Right, this one knows what I'm talking about. You gotta keep them little bastards in line. I bet he did, bet he did. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not. Wait, wait to keep you blind. <laughs> oh, we got another Robbie Burns here. A WBE, a WBE, yeah, that's his name. All right, but as for me and my house, we shall serve. But as for me and my house, we shall serve a strong Guinness, and then a shot, and then another Guinness. Because anything worth doing is worth doing twice. Sounds good. No dinner at your house. All right. Moving on. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to. Please stand up. Plans to kick some ass. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not in, or not on, pre-premarital sex. <laughs> Don't do it. Right. If there ain't no premarital sex for Father Delicious, there ain't none for you. All right. May the God of home fill you with... Damn apples. <laughs> but where does he put them? <laughs> I think we all know. And one last one. I don't think I'm gonna blow this. Like those kids. Hey, hold it now. We got one right here. Okay, okay, okay. well known verse. This is one of my favorite. This is one of my favorite verses right here. So we boiled my son and ate him, and on the next day I said to her. Thank you so much. That was my least favorite son, Malachi. Thank you. Malachi soup, everybody. Sounds delicious. All right, all right, all right. Moving on to our next round. We're going here really fast. We're going here really fast. All right, so as 
like you all know, the Irish have a certain poetic way of putting things. We're very poetic. And uh, we're going to pull up some Irish slang, some well-known Irish slang. You're going to tell us what it means. And if you can use it in a sentence, that would be perfect. All right. Can you please tell us what the, what the word banjax means? Oh, banjax. Yeah, you know, that's when you're... Uh... That's when you get right proper fucked over by, a, you know, say a flip over in the car or something like that. You, know, you, you, you realize that you're in a real, a real bugger of a situation you can't get out of, you know. You've been banjaxed, I, like I say. I, uh, I was walking out of the liquor store, dropped me whole six pack, spilled all over the floor, banjaxed, you know. Hi, it's, it's closer to broken, but that's very close, it's very close. It's closer to broken. Oh, hi. Right. very close, it's very close. Um, can you please tell us what the word mizzling means? It's a verb, mizzling. What's happening when it's mizzling? That was passed off from my dad, but uh, in my familia, we call that a pinche way. But uh, yeah, you really don't want to know, but uh, there's a lot of ways out there, so I, that's all I can say. It's a light rain, it means a light rain, but we're very close, we're very close. It means something different to every person. <laughs> can you please tell us? Can you please tell us what the verb slagging means? What is it when you're slagging someone? Oh, well, slagging is a very common thing to do in Ireland. It's when you, uh, it's when you've had one too many drinks, you see, and, and you're trying to get the uh, the sex going, but you've had a few too many whiskeys, <laughs> and so you're basically just pushing your soft pecker against the. Uh, Against your fair lasses, uh, uh, well, I don't want to say it, but you know where I'm going with it. And, uh, yeah, basically, it's like sex, but almost. It's a wholesome crowd, a wholesome crowd. It means to make fun of someone, but those are very close. Those are very close. All right. Now you. What does it mean if you're wired to the moon? If you're wired to the moon, it means you can go anywhere. Like I was saying, like, uh, I'm wired to the moon so I can defeat the Pope in combat. <laughs> All right, it's the exact opposite. It means you're hungover and you ain't going anywhere. You're staying in bed. Okay, what's a duder? D-O-O-T-E-R, duder. Well, a duder is, is when a very attractive father is tempting you against the Lord. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> You're close. In fact, I like your style. Duder means walk, as in you can duder over here anytime. <laughs> All right. Now you, you got up pretty quick. You must know what it is when someone's giving out. Oh uh, yeah, giving out. That's what happens if you live in New York for too long, and uh, you end up thinking that you're better than other people. <laughs> And uh, eventually you end up dying from smoking too much crack. He's close, everybody. He does it instinctually, if you know him. It's complaining. He couldn't have gotten the question wrong. All right, and for you, well, you're out of your tree. What am I saying? That's what my dumb daughter Sally calls when I go out of the house for a whole week. She's like, Mom, you're out of the tree again. And I'm like... Shut up, Sally! I don't like you! <laughs> All right, Sally, how many kids do you have? I don't even know. Well, this yeah. makes sense because out of your tree means very drunk. You've been out of the tree for a while. All right, moving on. All right, out of the tree, out of the tree. Yeah, I'm leaving the nest, all the kids. Okay, can you please tell me what this phrase means? Cat on a melodeon. Cat on the melodeon, yeah? Yeah, no, you know, when there's a cat on the melodeon, it means that there's, there's, just a, there's just a terrible clamor of sound, you know. It just sounds like there's some, some skittish little animal going a clang, a clang, a clang all over the keys of a melodeon, you know. And so, it's, you know, <laughs> like, I woke up in the middle of the night to a sound that sounded like the cat on the melodeon, you know. I, that is word for word, but I have it with three. <laughs> <laughs> Can you please tell me what it means if I were to tell you to wind your neck? 
tell my grandma that, eh? But, uh, yeah, you uh, go down the streets every once in a while, and you tag up that, and, uh, and that's like, you know, giving property of your turf or whatnot. Be quiet. <laughs> but you have to be quiet to tag. Uh, I don't know where my accents are. <laughs> Oh, up to high door is a very well-known phrase around Kilkenny, you see. It's, have you ever left the door for some bread out for several days? And it rises very high, but it also starts turning moldy. So in a similar sense, uh, if you spend a little bit too much time outside, and you start to grow hair on the outside of your skin due to the sun, we're very pasty people, uh, you, you become up to high door. Ah, it means very excited, but that would make me very excited. <laughs> All right, you, the jiu-jitsu guy, what's a melter? A melter is uh, when, you, when you're training too hard in the sun. And uh, yeah, you're just working out too hard, you know, drinking too many beers, and you're just moving too much hay, all that stuff. There is no sun in Ireland. This might be an imposter. A melter is an idiot or annoying person. All right, you. What's it mean to lob the gob? Thanks, buddy. I mean, father. I mean, um, lob the gob. Uh, uh, <laughs> that means when you are faithful to your husband. <laughs> Ooh, not even close. I'll tell you what the Lord's watching right now, but I can show you later. It means to kiss someone. Lob the gob. I assume someone who's been punched in an Irish fight. Okay, we're moving on. You, faffing. What the hell is faffing? Faffing is when you do something really stupid like when Tom Brady left the Pats. <laughs> All right, I think he's I think he's exactly right, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a perfect here. It means doing something without doing much of anything. I think that's it. And one more. I make, I make, 
I make walls and I make bridges, but do they ever call me Patty the Brick Builder? No. I have built churches. I built a church in my own town. Do they ever call me Patty the Church Builder? No. I built the schoolhouse. Do they ever call me Patty the School Builder? No. But you fuck one sheep. They never want to forget about it, and that's why I have wrath in my heart, Father. And that's why they won't let me into the Dave and Busters. Sorry about it. Hey, I think it's like school game. There's a cutting cheap section and a not cutting cheap section. Maybe you're doing it the wrong way. What do you think, Father? Well, I think it's asking for trouble bringing sheep to a Dave and Busters to begin with. <laughs> but my son, I want to see you hone that urge for the Lord. <laughs> Moving on. All right. We've uncovered your deadliest sin, which is vanity, obviously. <laughs> and we found a photo shoot of you in which you were dressed up as a very famous American hero in debaucherous poses, ungodly poses. Who was it, and why the hell did you do it? So fraud isn't an easy thing. And when you need to make it to the top, you have to start with the modeling agency. That's where the true pyramid scheme can happen, easiest and quickest. So, that's where I started. And I made some phony checks. And so, so what if I got caught? It's all right, it's cool when you uh, get bankrupt and then still have the urge to make more money afterwards. So, yeah, that's right. It's a little bit of pride. It's a little bit of pride in my life. Because of vanity. I want to become, because I want to become beautiful and like be like Kanye West. Alright. Thank you. I'm not convinced he answered the question, so that might have been a bonus confession. Might have been a, we might circle back. Oh, alright. Hi Doyle Doyle. Your sin that we've uncovered is sloth. <laughs> Don't ask me how we knew. What happened when you had to use the bathroom, the loo, but the remote was too far away to pause the movie? All right, well, I don't like being put on the spot about my personal business like that, but Father, as we discussed before, first of all, if a man's too drunk to count his own drinks, you can charge him what you want, right? It's a normal thing. Uh, but uh, aside from that, if a man can't see you below the bar, you don't have to wear pants, and it's up to you if you just want to position uh, a certain glass, maybe not this glass, like so, in the right spot so that you don't have to go, uh, you know, relieve yourself and uh, leave the bar unattended. I was doing it for the establishment, you see, Father. Uh, and, you know, it's just such a nice target to aim for, you know, we've had a few too many. Anyway, I gotta go back to cleaning my glass. All right. A couple things have come into light. Like when I tried to take a sip of your beer and why it tasted funny. Father Delicious doesn't have a sense of humor. All right. But isn't he scrumptious, folks? All right. Your deadly sin that we've uncovered is gluttony. What are the top three, top three, the trinity, you might say, off-limit things you have eaten in desperation? Well, uh, if you've been reading the Bible a little bit, Father, uh, I believe shellfish is wrong. Correct. Uh, I love wait, Are we allowed to eat bacon? Yeah, I am. Okay, okay, we're we, we, okay, we eating bacon. Um, can we eat kosher food? Uh, uh, oh, God. This guy doesn't know anything about Catholicism. Does it bleed? Uh, does it bleed? Does it bleed? All right, so I can't eat selfish, because uh, I'm selfish. Um, uh, I ate too many clams the other day, and uh, you know, I, I'm not supposed to, but I love cheesecake because I'm lactose intolerant. Oh, I just love it so much. I'm sorry, Father. Lactose intolerant, that's a sin. I was worried you were going to say something important, like the Declaration of Independence. Hey, that doesn't tell me that's God's punishment on you. You deserved it. All right. Hey. All right, and our most famous of the deadly sins, our most famous of the deadly sins, my personal favorite, shenanigans, shenanigans, shenanigans. 
We heard that she pulled off the greatest prank the Catholic girls' school had ever seen. What was it? That's prank. Oh, that was a long time ago, I'll tell you what, Father. I'm a changed woman. God doesn't forget. I hope you don't forget about last night. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, back in Catholic school, I, I had a few mistakes. Okay, I paid the best prank. We got four pigs, and we numbered them one, three, two, and five. And we set them loose, and we greased those bitches up. And they was running and looking for them all day. And while they were doing that, I was entertaining the principal. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. Last night, I was the fourth pig. <laughs> and stashing it in your secret vault. What is it, and why? Uh, yeah, Father, this goes back to when I was a janitor at Harvard. Um, I, uh, I, a friend of mine actually solved the problem up on the board, and I, I took credit for it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, Father. I don't even really know what to say. I, I have brain damage. I don't know if I've mentioned that or not. That changes the ending of the movie, I think. Thank you. Last one. All right. Your deadly sin is jealousy. What happened to that nun who got the parking space you wanted? Oh my God, you know about that? Okay, Father, I can explain. This nun, she just, she was so peaceful and she lives in like a quiet house no children, and she just lives her own life on her own terms. Well, I guess not really at all. On your terms. But on your terms. Um, and so she took my parking spot. I was having a rough day. And I think we can, we've all been there. I, uh, I didn't kill her, but listen, she has just one arm now. But you can still pray with one arm, I think. I think she can still pray. I'm sorry. Alright, one arm none. Don't steal a parking spot from this one right here. I gotta tell you, me and the Lord, we're very disappointed in all of you. You should, hey, settle down, Lord. I got this. Actually, Bonnie. Hey, being a pastor is very much like a priest, isn't it? Hey, they both are gatekeeping and they both deal with mostly rejection. Alright, so this is where your part comes in as an audience. So, our, our heathens here are going to get on their knees and beg for your forgiveness. Get on your knees, heathens! Oh, oh, please, for the love of God! Oh, Oh, stop. 
Naughty. Celtic Naughty. Well, first of all, drinking's not a game. It's a profession. And, uh, but if you are going to make it fun for yourself, Celtic Naughty is a very good game where you take a piece of rope, right, and you wrap it around your glass in such a way that you can lift it with your teeth to take a shot with no hands. <laughs> you know, I'm Scottish all of a sudden. <laughs> mouth is Irish, but his hands are Scottish. Okay, this one I hope it's not too personal. What's a nun's habit? Boy, with the nun again. I'm sorry about the nun. Okay, first of all, I don't need a game to have fun drinking. I'm a mom. Um, what was it again? The nun's habit? Okay, this is a super fun game. Exactly. Store hat too, that bitch. <laughs> This is a game, this is a great drinking game. What you do is you sit down in the shower, alone, you're in the shower, but this time you're sitting down and you're still crying, you're always just crying, and, um, but this time you're just drinking straight up gin. Straight up gin, crying in the shower. Sounds like a nun's habit to me. Okay, and for you, here's a cocktail. It's called a Liam Neeson. Uh, that's not this part of the game, Father. I think. It's a drinking game, Father. I'm the one with brain damage and you can't get your cars. It's my cars, I swear. Okay. What's the drinking game? That's a drink. Okay, so you, you, you get a bunch of friends together and you watch Euphoria and you take a drink every time you see a dick. <laughs> I love it. All right. Now what? All right. All right, that's exactly how you play. That's what he does every night. All right, all right, all right. May I have your crosses? We have to continually ask for a penny. Yeah. You're just not saved once for the rest of your life. You don't own them, you rent them. <laughs> But he swore he was celibate 
so I hired him for the hell of it to help me be morally judicious. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Alright. Well, I'll tell you what, I wrote a limerick too. Just to make sure we really drive it home. <laughs> Here it goes. Got a call from old Bonnie Lax. She said, I got a favor to ask. Can I help host her game without making it lame or bringing up her seedy past? The answer is no, I can't. She used to be a whore, people. <laughs> Busted. Anyway, Bonnie, thank you so much for everything. Back to you. All right, all right, all right. So, I'm going to need a word from the audience. A word. Like, preferably a noun that people would know. Chevron. And this is uh, something more general. Concrete. Concrete? Yeah. Concrete. Your word is concrete. So you're going to have uh, a couple of minutes to write a limerick, and it has to include the word concrete. Yeah, yeah, concrete. If it does include the word concrete, concrete. you're doomed to hell. Yes, concrete, both of you. And in the meantime, Tyler Delicious, do what you do best. Ah, yes. We're going to get a couple of confessions. Well, hmm, it's going to be have to be pretty close in crowd here. You, ma'am, I can see it in your eyes. You look like you have something to confess. It's me, Father Delicious. You may not get this chance again. Tell the good father what you've been hiding. <laughs> what? She's got a keg of beer in her trunk. What's that license plate? 666, we got a badass over here. All right, Lord, cover your ears on that one, Lord. All right. You, taco boy, how dare you? I dare, father, I dare, that's what I say. Oh, so you want a confession, do you? I want it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, all right. Okay. What do you got for me? What's really in there? Uh, my confession is that I ordered a family pack of like 10 fucking tacos and I've almost eaten all of them my fucking bloody self, you know. Very impressive, good confession there. And I think these two are ready. Ready with pure poetry. All right, we are going to give them both the chance to read their lyrics, and then we are going to go by audience applause, who wins. The winner will become the patron saint of something of their choosing. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to immediately canonize you. Ooh, okay, I get to go first, okay. <clears throat> a limerick. I have a couple blocks for my feet. They are made out of heavy concrete. I don't like my kids. Heaven forbid, just sink me and let my journey be complete. <laughs> some people like to pray in a chapel, and some people like to drink Snapple. Someday we'll meet on a street of concrete. How do you like them apples? Yeah. All right, here's a quick one off the cuff for both of you. You inspired me. If both of your faith was like stone, we would probably leave you alone. But you're both incomplete like flimsy concrete, so I think hell's where both of you are going. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. The last thing we're going to ask you to do, you're going to have to give a round of applause when I mention the name of the comedian that you want to see win. All right. Sally? Sally? If you want Sally to win, please clap your hands. Bobby, if you want Bobby to win, please clap your hands. What do you think, Father? You have the direct connection, direct connection to I Bob. Think, I think we're edging Bobby B. I think that's what we heard. All right, he didn't kill all of his children. Give it up for Bobby B. All right, tell, tell these people something good about yourself. I'm from Boston. <laughs> Greatest singing in the world. Now we're going to have some stand-up 
comedy from your contestants in the order that they got voted off. <laughs> Who is voted off in the first round? That was Million and Sam and Wallace and uh, yeah, come on, just do a thing. All right, welcome to the stage, Ryan Wallace. Ryan Wallace. I'm breaking the ice too, right? the other day, do you use conditioner? And I said, only on certain conditions. <laughs> I had to write these ones down. <clears throat> I think uh, a dumb spot, I really don't like dumb spot, but if a dumb spot does exist, it is for dumb bells. Because those, those don't ring. Huh. A person said, I'm 24 7. And I was like, that is a really old age. A rap. <laughs> you know who needs tires? Insomniacs. Because those are tired people. But they just need sleep. And tides, I'm pretty sure. Hey, how do you know if there's a, uh, a token white guy in the room? His name is J.R.R. He wrote some books. <laughs> My name's Ryan Moss, everybody. <laughs> What's up? My name is fine. Oh my gosh. Hi guys. How's it going? Oh, I love the energy. Okay, so um, I went to a, a really bad zoo the other day. Like, I hadn't seen anything like that. There was literally one animal there, and it was a shit zoo. Like, seriously. That's a joke! Oh! You get it. Thank you. Oh my god. Um, I just can't wait to be old, honestly. Like, has anybody noticed that when people are old, they no longer have to give a fuck? Um, and that's great, because honestly, they kind of deserve it. Like, you think about how much fuckery and how many bad days you have had up to this point, and your grandparents have experienced at least, like, four times that, assuming that fuckery occurs at a constant and steady rate, of course. Um, I'm not a mathematician, though. Um, like, I think about when I used to go visit my grandpa back when he was alive. Um, I know that's dark, but it's okay, you can laugh at this next part. It is allowed, I promise. Um, but we'd go, and my grandma would be sitting there, just like gossiping the whole time. She'd be like, you know, Mary Bell, she didn't have communion at Mass last week. I think she's cheating on her husband. Yes, she is. That's what I'm saying, I would know. Um, but, and then she'd be like, isn't that right, Francis? Look over to my grandpa. And he wouldn't even move his eyes from the TV screen. He'd be like, Ugh. <laughs> He'd be like, I knew you knew Francis. And on the ride home, my mom would be like, oh my God, grandpa was so talkative today, wasn't he? And I was like, I cannot wait until I have that kind of freedom. Like when I can walk into the room, a room and no one expects me to do anything but grunt and fart. And the sad part is, I know I'm like 50 years away from that. <sighs> all right, that's really all I have. I wasn't that prepared. Thank you guys for your time. Evan Galpert, everybody. Evan Galpert. Hey, there you go. Give it up one more time for Max Backstory, your host, the one that wrote that game. Very much, very awesome. Uh, and uh, let's look at me, shall we? Uh, I kind of look, I, I've been trying to grow my beard back, but it's not really there yet, so I kind of just look like an out-of-work Koopa Trooper from the live-action Mario Brothers movie. Oh my God, oh my God. Uh, I feel like I look like Wooly Willy if you put, like, some of the magnet dust, like, around here, and then put the rest of it, like, just right there, you know? Uh, I kind of look like an extra from American History X, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to, that's not what I'm going for, it's an accident. What's actually funny about that is I'm half Jewish. 
the bottom half. Hey, this guy knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's right. What I mean by that is uh, I, I have bad knees and hairy feet, and uh, I, I, my hip acts up when the weather gets my sugar. Uh, no, uh, uh, I, have, uh, I have depression. It's, uh, it's a mental illness, which is not... Yeah, yeah, give it up for depression, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, they say it's not contagious, but I think you know, some of you guys are starting to get it, you know? Like, uh, um, yeah, so I call it like, you know, I feel like depression is kind of like being stuck on a radio station and you can't tune the channel, you know? Like, I call it being stuck on K-Fuck Radio. Like, you're tuning into K-Fuck Radio, bringing you the top 40 ruminating thoughts that make you want to dance yourself up a fucking cliff, you know? K-Fuck Radio! That's K-F-U-C, K, deal with it, because you only have one option. You're tuning into K-Fuck Extreme, bringing you the top 40 ruminating thoughts that make you want to beat your head against the wall! Bienvenido a Radio K-Fuck, K-F-U-C, que bueno! Radio Cero, puto cero, tu es un puto, tu es nada. <laughs> Radio TFUC, que bueno. El sponsor de Budweiser. Uh, <laughs> you're tuning into K5 Public, reminding you that the public is really the most obnoxious thing. Uh, let's take a word from our sponsor, shall we? Evan, this is your father. Uh, I just wanted to tell you that I can send you some more money, buddy. You're going to be just okay. And uh, I have a friend in town with a temp agency. We'll find you a job. It's going to be all right, buddy. You just wait. Radio. <laughs> uh, I think that's all that I got for you guys right now. I'm Evan Galbert. Thank you so much. Irish holidays. It's, it's very American. This fucking country was founded by some drunk bastards. Do you know about this? Do you know about the founding fathers and how wasted they got before they wrote the Constitution? This is all true fact. You can look it up on Wikipedia. They spent the modern equivalent of hundreds of thousands of dollars in the weekend before they started writing the Constitution. You can look up their bar tab. It was found in some old Boston bar that Bobby probably hung out with all the time. And uh, it, it's this giant list. They just got absolutely shit hammered and then like wrote the founding document of this country. And I can just imagine the third day in, Benjamin Franklin just kicks down the door like, hey, hey, I, I like, I like what you're doing. It's very good. It's very. I a couple of changes. Number one, you don't fucking tell me to shut up, Jefferson. Okay. Rule number two. You get a gun. I get a gun. Everybody gets a gun. Okay. Rule number three, you can't let your friends sleep at my house anymore. The kid used to have his friends sleep at my house all the time. It's not cool, okay? It's the king used to have his friends sleep. Fourth amendment. Fourth amendment. And then, and then, and then. Rule number five, I'm going to stop talking right now. That's exactly how that fucking happened. First half of the Bill of Rights, right there. Just one fucking long drunken stumble. That's how we got here, and I think, considering the circumstances, we were doing about as expected. Uh, you know, man, you get, I, I'm also depressed. Thank you, Evan, for bringing that up. I, uh, you know, it's, here's the thing, though. My favorite emotion, hands down, is rage. I love rage. Rage, because it makes you feel stronger, you know, than you actually are, like in real life. For like a second, you can just scream, and then it's like everything's okay again. Uh, the thing is, like, I started going to therapy, and that ruined everything, you know? Because you start analyzing your rage in real time. Like, you start screaming at people, and you're like, this is fucking stupid, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I'm actually just mad about my family. Like, you know, it's that kind of thing. And that's the worst. It's like decaf rage. You know, like, my doctor says it's better for me, but, like, what the fuck's the point anymore? Like, I might as well just become vegan and start volunteering with children. Like, who fucking cares anymore? I don't know, I'm trying to be more optimistic. I don't think I have it in me anymore. Like, you know, cause like COVID's going away, but it's coming back and like, I want to be optimistic, but I, I don't have the energy anymore. The best I can do now is like, I hope things can get better because I just don't think I can handle the hassle. You know, like that's, that's about the most I can hope for. It's like, well, 
Maybe I won't have to deal with this bullshit. Ah, that's pretty new. But um, what, what else? Do you guys ever notice how, uh, like, ten years ago, when every girl in the world started making that duck face in every selfie? Do you know why they... Did you guys figure out where that came from? Fucking Zoolander. That's where they got that. They're all just doing blue steel or whatever. I don't know, that occurred to me. Anyway, give it up for Meg and whoever else is going to come tell jokes. Sorry for the mental image, and I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror, and I thought, oh man, that's a fucking bummer, dude. I look like a, I look like a scarecrow if a scarecrow was made from a bag of dead hamsters with a volleyball for a head. I look like a fat Nosferatu. Um, yeah, I'm kind of fat. And I discovered chafing recently, too. Anybody else discover that? Chafing is when one fat, disgusting part of your body rubs against another fat, disgusting part of your body until it starts to burn. 
So I had no idea that this was a thing. I, I quit doing drugs and I lost all this weight. And all this is just on fucking fire all the time now. You know, like I'll, I, I'll be, it's, it feels like somebody's spray Tabasco sauce all over my inner thighs, like right now. Um, and uh, I, uh, I have this really physical job where I have to lift heavy things all day and I'll be at work and we'll be doing something and then I'll have to stop in the middle of it and be like, hold on a second guys, wait, oh fuck, god damn it. My coworker would be like, dude, are you okay? What's going on? Oh, it just burns so fucking bad. How did it get up inside my asshole? <laughs> um, yeah, so don't you don't quit doing drugs. Okay, that's that's the moral of that story. Um, so if you're like me, you hate everything. I hate I hate everything. Does anybody else here hate everything? I even I even I even I even hate the things that I love sometimes. You know, and I don't really want to go through. Like, I I I definitely hate myself, but I know myself really well. There's no way that I should love myself, knowing myself as well as I do. Okay, let's, let's just put it that way. And um, but I don't want to have like this black brick of hatred sitting on my heart all the time. So I decided that I would try and do something constructive with my hate, you know, like I, I want to focus my hate on big issues, like I want to hate racism, or I want to hate injustice. But after a while I realized that that's kind of a waste of time because those things are always going to exist. So I decided that I'm just really going to hate country music. Because I truly believe that if we band together, we can eradicate country music in our lifetime as we know it. And then, and then, and then racists will have nothing to listen to. That usually splits the room. This next one will definitely split the room. Um, <clears throat> the only thing I hate more than country music is the band Sublime. I'm so glad that motherfucker's dead so he can't hear any more shitty music. That joke is really just for me, okay? You've been a great crowd, folks. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thanks for Santa Cruz Brewing Company for having us. Meg, you're the best. which is where I get my curly hair and my food motivation from. Uh, so, <laughs> this is, uh, this week, this week right now is my one year anniversary for having invasive uterus surgery. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. I went to the gynecologist a year ago, uh, and she was like, did you know that your IUD is piercing through the lining of your uterus? And she tried to get it out, and it was broken, yep. And, yeah, and so, and so I had to go to the hospital, so I got my birth control forcibly removed a year ago this week, which is perhaps the most Catholic thing I've ever done for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> uh, yeah, so my family's Irish on both sides. They came here in the Great Hunger, and uh, they moved to New York City, and then they were like, that's not cold and gray and dreary enough, let's go north. <laughs> So I grew up in Rochester, uh, also because they had tuberculosis, which, uh, like, ironically sounds like a disease you get when you eat too many potatoes. Tuber! <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was reading this article the other day. I was reading this. You ever get in a hole in a rabbit hole in Reddit? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's like on this rabbit hole on Reddit um, about this person that was arguing really hard about how it's cultural appropriation to eat food from any other country where your ancestors didn't come from. So starting next week, I'm planning on starving to death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that was the only reason that our hungry asses came across the ocean was to eat y'all's damn food. <laughs> Right? Like, Sinead and Maeve did some divination on sheep bones, and they were like, there's going to be tacos in every city in a hundred years, let's get in line now. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, there's a reason, even the food we do have is not good, right? Like, there's a reason there's no Irish food trucks on the street. If you hear that there's an Irish food truck, that's a euphemism for a bootlegging van. <laughs> Yeah, I was the only kid, like anybody else here was the only kid in school growing up who were like, when they had heritage food day, when you had to bring in like food from your family. Like anybody else here the only kid who brought in soda bread? Yeah. <laughs> Motherfuckers were bringing in dumplings and like enchiladas and soul food and I had soda bread, which is of course named after its main ingredient, baking soda. It was like salty rock we pulled out of the sea like a fucking curse. Yeah. Um, I went to I went to a very very Christian school in the middle of rural nowhere. I had to 
go there. Uh, my dad was driving, he worked in a factory for like 30 years, then he was driving a bus. He quit his job and uh, got a job doing the graveyard shift in security so that we could go to college for free. So with the one in free tuition, I had to go to this very rural Christian school. It was a dry campus in a dry town. They had only legalized dancing two years before I got there. <laughs> So I didn't go on a single date my entire college experience because I didn't want to marry anyone. <laughs> yeah, it was a very Irish town, it was called Belfast, New York. And uh, they're famous because, well they're not famous, but they think they're famous because uh, John L. Sullivan, the famous Irish bare knuckle boxer, uh, was famously this alcoholic and got in trouble a lot because he'd drink instead of training. So they sent him to this wasteland of a town for three months and said, like, you can train here because you can't possibly get in trouble here. And the town was so psyched about it that we built him a statue. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I'm from. Yeah. And, uh, and my family, my family's very Irish. My dad's side, my grandparents both worked in a button factory. Uh, my mom's side, uh, my grandmother, <laughs> she spelled my name wrong my entire life on purpose because she wanted to spell it the Irish way. Uh, and she was a tuckle bird. She was a tuckle bird. She, uh, she famously carried my mother and my aunt when they were little kids to the dentist's office, got all of her teeth pulled out of her mouth, and then carried them back home and was like, that was a Wednesday. This is how tough she was. And she didn't like us very much. She didn't like us when I was growing, when I was growing up. Um, but a couple years ago, so she, she was in a nursing home. She wasn't doing very well. And a couple years ago, I went home uh, back to Western New York. And uh, my mom was by her bedside, and my mom was like, uh, I got to the airport and I was like, oh, you know what, don't worry, like, don't leave, I'll take a taxi, I'll take an Uber, I'll take a Lyft, I'll get there, please don't leave. And my mom was like, no, 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 I'll come get you, I'll come pick you up. And I was like, no, 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 don't leave, I'll, I'll come take an Uber. And my mom was like, no, 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 I want to pick you up. So my mom came to pick me up from the airport, and uh, in those 20 minutes between when she left and when we got to the nursing home, my grandmother died. Uh, and I was like, you bitch. <laughs> that is the mic drop of Irish goodbyes right there. Just fucking snuck out. Yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. Give yourself a round of applause. Give all your comedians a round of applause. And, um, and we're going to do something interesting to end the night. It might go well, it might not. Um,
show. Witch and Bitch Fest. We had Witch and Bitch Fest. There are witches and there are bitches and there are witches that are bitching and bitches that are witching. Saturday night, uh, Desert Dogs. Saturday night, Desert Dogs. Do we have a time on that? 7 8? 6.30. 6.30. Come out. Yeah. Uh, 6.30, Desert Dogs. It's and an open mic, too. It's, it's an, an open mic. mic. Come showcase your talent. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Have a good night. Drive safe. And go on to YouTube and follow Wayward Comedy on YouTube. And you can watch all of our fun videos and stuff, too. Thank you guys for coming out. You're all right. Hold on. Say goodbye.